Who is Crota? And why are we going after him in Destiny's second raid? You know, the one with the spoiler in the title. We'll no doubt learn plenty about Crota in the dark below, but what does Destiny Vanilla and the Grimoire have to say about him? Let's find out. Thousands of Guardians tried to keep the moon from falling under the Hive's control, but the Hive fought beneath a master, a master who marched with the Thousand Knights, who killed countless Guardians, who set the moon's sky aflame, and who wielded a sword meant to ravage worlds. Under interrogation, a Hive wizard revealed the master's name. Crota. He and his legions were too powerful, and Luna was abandoned. The Hive carved themselves a necropolis from the conquered moon's corpse. How many other worlds has the Hive left dead and hollow in its wake? You learned of a Hive library from the ghost you recovered during your first lunar mission. The library is called the World's Grave for it contains all that is left of the worlds the Hive has devoured. The library holds information about Earth and you and Ghost seek to steal that information back. Your destination is protected by an ancient knight. The way to him is filled with green crystals, hanging pupae, and apparently unavoidable chasms. Further impeding your progress is the spawn of Crota, a high faction the members of which once fought beneath the moon's conqueror and who herald his return. Ghost warns you of the power of the knight protecting the world's grave, so you eliminate him with as much heroism as you can muster. Once Cranox is defeated, you claim the key to the world's grave, and with it you go in search of the library. On the way, Ghost attempts to liven the mood. This should lead us right to the grave. The world's grave, not ours but only succeeds in making everything more sad. You locate the library and plug Ghost in. As he explores the enemy's secrets, Hive attack. You attempt to fight them off and Ghost learns that the Hive have broken the Beckenstein limit, which sort of means that they've stored more information than should be possible within the space they've stored it. This means they must have an impossibly long history. Once you've successfully repelled the monsters, Ghost informs you that the Hive have seen thousands of worlds taken by the darkness, and that Earth will meet the same fate, just as soon as the Hive's gods, of which Crota is one, return. According to the Cryptarch, Crota is asleep, but the sword with which he conquered the moon, the sword that drained whatever light it touched, remains awake. If it is inevitable that the Hive's gods will return, at the very least you can try to deprive one of them of his signature weapon. To destroy the sword, you need to kill its makers, the Swarm Princes. One, Banuk, guards a ritual site near the Hellmouth. He is the first to be challenged, and the first to fall. The others haunt the chamber in which the sword itself resides. Ghost directs you there. This time, Ghost doesn't even attempt to liven the mood. Not to unsettle you, but I'm tracking the sword by the light of the guardians it's killed. He can be a downer sometimes. You reach the chamber and the sword is waiting for you, begging sword. to be wielded. In your hands, the weapon does not appear capable of ravaging worlds, but it does make you an impossible opponent. Scores of Hive fall before you, and one by one the remaining swarm princes are lured out. Garok, Dakur, and Merok each one is challenged, and each one defeated. Once the final prince is killed, the sword disappears. Just like that, one of the Hive's most powerful weapons is gone. Hopefully, for good. There's at least one other name, besides Crota, that pervades Hive runes, ciphers, and rituals. That name is Oryx. The old warlock Osiris spoke with fear of some king named Oryx. He spoke of shrines dedicated to this king and insisted that they be destroyed. The Hellmouth holds one such shrine further down than you've ever gone before. 
As you make your descent, you're surprised to encounter Fallen from the House of Exile. A little deeper, Ghost picks up on Fallen comms that a Baron named Frigoris has been enticed away from his skiff. You're invited to take out the Baron while you have the chance. As you do battle with him, though, you're reminded of a story you heard told by Cade Six. He'd been searching for a shrine himself when he came across a fallen baron. Without exchanging a word, the two fought together back to back against waves of hive attackers. Maybe the House of Exile is just as worried about the shrines of Oryx as you are. You feel a pang of regret as you put the final bullet into Baron Frigoris. You continue your search for the shrine and a deep roar climbs the walls of a chasm as you pass it by. The roar is likely to have come from Fogoth, an ogre that is in the process of being reborn, or given new purpose by Hive Wizards. The ritual is overseen by Mormu, who is the spawn of another mysterious Hive figure known as Zol. But you carry on past the chasm and onwards through the warring Fallen and Hive. The Hive impeding your search for the Shrine are a mixture of the Hidden Swarm, a faction that acts as the Hive's outermost line of defense, and of Crota's own legion. Eventually you find the Shrine, a great dark spherical apparatus the purposes of which you try not to imagine. Ghost interfaces with it in an effort to find a weakness. He discovers that the Shrine is tethered to a power far beyond the edge of the solar system. That link needs to be broken. As Ghost attempts to do just that, a giant arrives to protect the shrine. The knight's name is Sardok, Eye of Oryx. As you engage with the walking nightmare, you wonder if through it, Oryx is truly watching you. A few dozen bullets is enough to shut Oryx's eye, and just in time, Ghost has found a way to make the shrine vulnerable. It lights up with an angry red, and in response, you light it up with a few rounds of sunfire. The connection is severed, but whatever the shrine was communing with is still out there. So, what was the shrine connected to? Who is Oryx? Well, we know that Oryx is a king. Perhaps the king of all the hive. We know that he is Crota's father. Crota, son of Oryx. And that Crota is trying to snuff out the worlds of light so that Oryx's coming will be unfettered. Hence, it's probably in our best interest to snuff out Crota in the upcoming raid. We can also speculate upon Oryx's appearance. The shrine, why is it shaped like a sphere? It seems almost random, unless it is made in the image of Oryx. I know. That sounds ridiculous. A powerful entity shaped like a planet? What are the chances of that? Thank you for watching. As usual, a special thank you to all the viewers who liked my last video and who subscribed to my channel. I'd like to end this video with a quote from Zer. Unfortunately, I don't have footage of Zer saying it himself, but it goes something like this. Your traveller has a dark mirror.